great. Well, hello and welcome. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday, which means that it is vlog day, you guys. And yeah, I got a little vlog planned out for you here. As far as the timestamps go that I usually try to put right here, I'm just I'm just scrapping that. I'm just not going to do it anymore. I always forget. I get to the end of the video and I start doing things and I save it and I go, okay, cool. And I always just forget about it. So just we're just going to forget about those for now. Someday when I when I actually make that a thing, it'll be a thing. But for right now, ah, eh, let's 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 disregard that. But I do have a pretty cool little vlog for you guys today. We're going to be doing some uh, retro vaping. We're going to be doing some first impressions. We're going to be talking about that new 528 custom vape squonker. And actually, if you're here, if you're new to the vlog and you're just here to see that custom, that 528 custom vape squonker, it's going to be, it's just going to be in a few minutes, just coming up real, real quick, like in a few minutes. I'm going to include it during the what I've been vaping segment, which is usually like, I don't know, six, six minutes in, six or seven minutes in, not sure. But yeah, welcome. Welcome to the vlog, everybody. Buddy, thank you so much for joining me. Before we get too far into this vlog, we do have to thank our sponsor of the vlog. Of course, I'm talking about TPDCertified.com. TPD Certified, experts in the field of TPD compliance, offering the most all-inclusive TPD service on the market today. Everything you need all in one place to help give your brand access to one of the largest and most rapidly growing vaping markets on the planet. By the vapors, for the vapors, made to support the community and the industry worldwide, head over to TPDCertified.com and get in touch today. Yeah, absolutely. Great sponsor of the vlog. And of course, they're paying me zero money to say that. I just think they're a great company and it's who we're using to go through the TPD process in Europe and the UK. And because I'm always fiddling with my audio video setup, hoping everything sounds good today, hoping everything looks good today. As always, your honest feedback is always appreciated down in the comments below. But before we get much farther into this vlog, certainly before we get to what I've been vaping, I want to do that thing where I, I hear from one of my subscribers. It's just one of my favorite new things to do. So right now I'd like to hear from Matlin. Hey, what's up, bro? My name's Matlin. I'm 24. Uh, I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Um, yeah, I've been watching videos for a while now. They help me out a lot. And uh, I was just wondering if I can get a shout out from my mom. Um, she's been trying to quit smoking. I bought her a, a little mouth long. Like it's like the Vapresso drizzle. Just to see if she would like it. You know, I thought it was kind of cool, but yeah, she uses it. Eh, but yeah, I just would maybe like to get a shout out for her. So maybe some like, you know, encouragement, words of wisdom, all that good stuff. Um, I appreciate everything you do, man. I've watched your videos for a while. They've been on and off for years. I feel like we have a lot in common, you know. I like metal. Uh, I play drums. So yeah, um, thank you for everything. Um, keep on vaping. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, yeah, your mom is going to get a shout out right there. Watch out. Incoming fist bump. Yeah, definitely. Shout out for your mom. Thank you so much for the support. And thank you so much for sending in a video. If anybody else has any quick videos like that that they would like to see in this vlog, send them on over. Nick at GrimGreen.com. You got a shout out for your favorite shop, for your mom, for your brother, for your favorite snapback. I don't know why I said that. It's because there's a snapback right there sitting on my desk and it was something I looked at. It was either, my choices were either Stormtrooper, Snapback, or water cup. And I feel like I made the best decision out of those three. But but anyway, let's just dive in uh, right now. Let's talk real quick about what I've been vaping. So the first thing I've been vaping like a crazy person that I can't ever seem to put down is that kudzu honey badger, kudzu gambit combo. This RDA, man, I, I keep bragging about the flavor. I just keep going on and on about the flavor, the flavor, the flavor, the flavor. I really want some more people to try this RDA so that they can go, yeah, Nick, the flavor, or they can go, no, Nick, the flavor. I think this little RDA has stellar flavor. I've got it loaded up with Yig, and it's just been something that has been my daily banger. I can't put it down. <sighs> flavor, flavor, flavor for days on that. Oh shit, I meant to do the 528 thing first. Okay, well now we're just gonna do the 528 thing last. No big deal, it's like two more minutes. So last week I opened the Smoant Charon 218TS and I was, I was maybe poking a little bit of fun at it. This is actually a pretty cool little mod. I've been using it a lot. I put the Wake RTA on here. I have not put this combination down. This is loaded up with jungle juice, I believe, which is just a sweet, delicious, fruity flavor juice. And don't worry, I'll put links 
to everything I talk about down in the description below. But this has been a rockin' little thing, man. I didn't think I would like this mod as much as I do. But one thing I really like about it is the little lock unlock button. This is something we're all used to with like smartphones and iPhones and Android phones. There's a little button where it's like, make your screen go to sleep, wake your screen up, make your screen go to sleep. And it's just great because you can leave your screen off and just vape it and cool and you're not worrying about adjusting anything or accidentally touching anything. And then when you want to see what you're doing, you go click and a display pops up and it says, oh, okay, that's right. This is set to 58.7 watts. So let's just round this up to 59 watts. There's my resistance. There's my battery life. Cool. Turn it off and now I can vape. And maybe I'm just all about flavor these days for some reason, but man, this wake tank is just a little flavor machine, man. I love, love, love having that really like delicate balance between like some good clouds, like some good clouds, bro clouds, and then some just flavor that kind of just Oh, flavor. I also, a few days ago, randomly put this setup together. This is that Mods by Nazi box mod. It's a PWM box, I'm very sure. It's not like a Hexone because I can hear the little ee when you press the button. I'm gonna put this up to the microphone and see if you can hear it when I press the button. It's just a slight little ee sound. Ah, did you hear it? Maybe not, let's try it again. Yeah, there it was, definitely a little ee happening in there. And that's just what happens with PWM mods, pulse width modulation mods. Yeah, you know, it's hex homey and it's got a raised but centered 22 millimeter 510 connection. So I've got it topped with the Watofo flow tank with those baby beast coils from earlier in the week. The baby beast coils, these Medusa coils, while expensive, they've been really nice. They've been working really freaking well. I got this loaded up with Vigilante Rogue. This is just a rad little delicious vape. I think for flavor, I think those with stock Watofo flow coil heads are the way to go if you're looking for more flavor. If you're looking for more of a little bit of a clouds bro clouds experience, the baby beast coils fit in here and they work great. And so far, like I said, these Medusa coils have been very nice. And I would love to get some stock baby beast coils right next to these Medusa coils because kind of right away, I noticed that these Medusa coils have a little bit better of a flavor and I get a little bit more saturated of a vape. Second to lastly, one thing I've been vaping is this right here. So this is the series version of the Titan. This is the Titan SE and it runs in series as opposed to parallel. And I don't remember the guy's name, but I think it was during one of my Patreon live streams and someone said, hey Nick, I noticed you've been rocking your Titan a lot lately. You should get out your Titan SE and put a recoil Rebel on top and see how it goes. And I thought, Shit, man. Yeah, I definitely want to do that. I got some 0.390 ohm Mokhtar vapes coils in here. That's my buddy from uh, 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 Kuwait. Yeah, he's in Kuwait. Mokhtar vapes. He's in Kuwait and he builds me coils sometimes and sends them on over. And they're always, always great coils, bro. Always great coils. But yeah, this was a 0.39. I've got it loaded up with Poet, uh, the Sweet Black Tea, Recoil Rebel with the AFC cap, fully open. Yeah, series, man. I forgot how much I like series. I got one of those those knurled dock tips on the top and I also put boom romance mechanic sticker on come on that looks super cool and I'm wearing I'm like romance mechanics fan 99 at gmail.com right now but this vape ha this this reminds me why I like series so much it's just hot hot vape and and dense and hot Holy crap, it's good, it's just good. It's just nice and hot. The thing that happens is with series builds when you're running a really high voltage, like into the eight volt range, you need a lot of resistance for that, but also you need a flavor of juice that's not like a delicate juice. I don't know if it was such a good idea putting this Poet Sweet Black Tea in here, because this Poet Juice is a little bit delicate. It's got some like delicate sweet tea flavors kind of going in there. It's not just like strawberry, you know? This series builds, I feel like, they're made for like simple flavors. It's like, yeah, strawberry, yeah, for good cereal, just a big flavor for a big warm vape. I feel like some more delicate flavors get a little bit lost when you're running this high of a voltage. Still super fucking good though. 
And finally, lastly, yeah, this is the dual 18650 Squonker from 528 Custom Vapes and Greg Stevens. Greg Stevens is more of the mastermind behind this and 528 Custom Vapes is the manufacturer and that's why there's like a, a five, I mean, it was like a joint, it was like a joint thing, but if we're really gonna talk about the brains behind this, we gotta talk about Greg Stevens. He's a great builder on Instagram. He does some super crazy dope builds and he's a very smart, smart guy. He designed this mod from top to bottom fully mechanical dual 18650 squonker and it's got some pretty unique features and this isn't going to be a full review but I do want to say I've been using this for uh two months now just a little over two months I was in the prototype beta group so I was testing out all the prototypes and giving feedback I finally got the final version about three weeks ago when I couldn't talk about it on video I had this whole segment recorded and I couldn't put it on YouTube yet because Tom from 528 was like nope yeah, nope no bro, sorry. Um, but one thing that I wanted to show you guys is I need to fill up this juice bottle right here and it's got a really smart, smart way of filling up this juice bottle. You take this bottom little thing completely off. It's just a little thumb screw on the bottom. You set that down and your bottle just drops out. Look at that bottle just dropped out. You take the little straw out with an O-ring. M-Turk hooked up a bunch of his new Turkish maize, which is like this weird, sweet, butterscotch cornbread type of situation going on. It's delicious. I tried this at ECC. Kent let me try this at ECC, but he had it dripped over like strawberry apple peach, like dynamite fuse. And so it kind of tasted like cornbread mixed with dynamite fuse. And I was like, that, you know what? I'm just, I'm good. Thanks. I'm just going to wait until I get my own and taste it in my own environment. But yeah, it's super easy. You just fill this up. I leave a lot of space at the top. I leave a little bit of space at the top like this. And then all you really got to do is I squeeze the bottle like this. This is just a technique I use. This is the technique that a lot of people have told me, including Tom from 528, that you just squeeze the bottle like this. And then when you put your straw in, right, you kind of press your, press your straw into place while letting go of the bottle. And that's it and it's good. And I was doing this, I, I wasn't using this technique. I kept filling up the bottle and every time I pushed the straw in, juice would just rock it out of here. I'd be like, Whoosh. I'm like, well, that's, that sucks, made a mess and now I'm wasting juice. And that happened every single time. And then someone in a group chat was like, no, just squeeze the bottle, put the straw in, smack, you know, press it down into place while you release the bottle and then boom, that's it. You got nothing to worry about. And then you take your bottle and you just put it back in and I hold it like this with my finger and I put this little, uh, little thumb screw back in the bottle. Bottom. And that's it, dude. It's great. Dual 18650 Squonker. I've been using this like crazy. In fact, within the next week to two weeks, I'm just going to do, I'm going to have a full review of this up on YouTube. We're going to go from it top to bottom. We're going to take it apart, fully mechanical switch. It's really easy to take apart. It's really easy to put back together and clean the contacts and stuff like that. Sorry, I know this isn't a review, but I just want to say I've been having a really great time with this. Anyway, Recoil Rebel with a squonk pin on top, Turkish Maze on the inside, uh, traditional Cloudsboro Clouds snake bite airflow on top. This is a damn good vape. Also, slightly matchy matchy DHD cap on there. I mean, it's it's green and black and I feel like there's some green and black going on. I don't know. It's not my best effort, but at least it's a little bit more matchy than that rig mod descendant was. I dig it. I dig it. This is the squonk life for me, man. Unregulated dual 18650s, squonker, recoil rebel on top. Are you kidding me? This is like squonkers for people that actually like clouds. But anyway, yeah, that's what I have been vaping. So what we're gonna do right now is, man, I really need to make a bumper for this. I'm gonna make it my mission to have a cool bumper right here so that we can jump right into news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. So the first little bit of news I have isn't vape related, but it is still very sad. Last week I was telling the story of, was it last week? I don't know, it could have been two weeks ago. I was telling the story of how I got the name Grim Green and it's all related to Disneyland and the Haunted Mansion. And I'm not gonna tell it again, but if you wanna know that story, Story. Go back about two weeks, I think, for the Getting to Know Grim Green segment. Talk about why my name is Grim Green. It comes from the Haunted Mansion. Anyway, a fellow who goes by Gibus, G-E-B-U-S, Gibus, he sent me a, a very sad email last week. The man that wrote the song Grim Grinning Ghosts, as well as A Pirate's Life for the Pirates of the Caribbean ride, 
he died at 98. F. Xavier Atencio. Everybody just called him X. X Atencio. That's just a that's just a super cool name. And that really bummed me out, man. I kind of had already thought that he was dead, and then I learned quickly that he was, in fact, alive, but now is, in fact, dead. So, to people like me, to Disneyland fans, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. The guy that wrote the song that became the Grim Green namesake, yeah, he passed away, and that's that's really sad. But thank you, G-Bus, for sending that my way. So last week we had a CASA call to action in Mississippi, and this week we have a CASA call to action in Minnesota. Alex Clark from CASA sends over the calls to action. Um, you know, if you're a member of CASA, you'll, you'll get all the calls to action in your emails. I get a CASA call to action in every email that I have because I've signed up all my emails to CASA because I really don't want to miss those call to actions. But this one comes from Robbinsdale, Minnesota. Take action to oppose tobacco and vapor tax 21 and over as well. The Robbinsdale City Council will hold a public hearing on an ordinance that would, among other things, raise the age to purchase all tobacco and vapor products from 18 to 21, restrict the sale of flavored tobacco, and vapor products in flavors and in any other flavors other than tobacco, mint, wintergreen, and menthol. Yes, a flavor ban. It says, please take action now by filling out the form below. And like I said, don't worry, I'll have links to everything down in the description, including this call to action, so we can all click on it and take action. All right, well, as I was shooting this vlog, I was very unaware of the date, and the date on this Minnesota flavor ban was the 26th and that was a few days ago. So I'm sorry, I try my best to get all the CASA information out there, but sometimes I'm just not fast enough. So please go to CASA, please subscribe so you can get the calls to action delivered right to your email. Uh, I'm gonna leave this segment in the vlog because I still feel like there's some pretty good information in there. Okay, yeah. The hearing is scheduled for Tuesday, September 26th, 2017. Please see the linked announcement for the full details at 7 p.m. Council City Chamber, City Hall, 4100 Lakeview Avenue North, Robinsondale, Minnesota, 55422. If you're in the area, yeah, definitely go up and, and, and show up to the hearing. If you're not in the area, click the link down in the description to help take action and hopefully stop a flavor ban. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning of the new legislative season. We're going to have states and cities across the country doing very similar things. 21 and up, flavor bans, hefty taxes, 75% wholesale tax. Connecticut just dodged a 75% wholesale tax. This is just starting this year and it's going to keep happening and keep happening and keep happening. So we really, we really got to be on it. We really got to be on it. Oh yeah, Jeebus, this was his whole email. He says, uh, Xavier Atencio, the creator of the Haunted Mansion writer and the song Grim Grinning Ghost has passed away at I believe 95 years young. Nice, long, fulfilled life. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. In other, in other news, I've recently picked up a Hex V3 and it's begging for a cool sticker. So maybe a Grim Army sticker would look badass just saying keep on vaping Nick. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of the things that I want to do very, very soon is make mod sized stickers mod sized stickers. All my stickers are always way, way too big for mods. So what I want to do is I'm just going to measure like a hexome door and be like, okay, well, this is the size that I need. And it's going to be a tiny dinky little thing, but they're for mods, not necessarily like for your car or for your iPad or something like that. A lot of people have also been sending me this article from vaping360.com where the CDC tested the air inside of a vape shop to see if there were any, you know, toxins. They were looking for a diacetyl and AP and like any possible toxins or particulates that were in the air. Guess what? You'll never guess what they found. Uh, basically nothing. I'm going to post a link down in the description to this Vaping 360 article, but they basically found nothing in the air and the things that they did find in the air were well, well below workplace safety standards. A new report by the U.S. government agency says that their test showed levels of vaping related chemicals in the air of a vape shop were all below workplace safety safety limits. The National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, NIOSH, issued the report titled Evaluation of Chemical Exposures in a Vape Shop in July, but the testing took place in January of 2016. The shop isn't named in the report. So evidently the CDC and NIOSH were invited by the vape shop to test the air inside their shop. And NIOSH is a, uh, you know, it's like OSHA. It's like a, a safety standards in the workplace kind of thing. The article goes on to say, according to the report, NIOSH 
Roush was asked to evaluate the shop by its owners. The agency's primary objective was to evaluate employees' potential exposure to chemicals associated with vaping in the shop. Our work involved sampling air for specific flavoring chemicals associated with respiratory disease, sampling the air for nicotine, propylene glycol, formaldehyde, and other VOCs, volatile organic compounds, sampling work surfaces for metals and nicotine, and observing work practices. Now, this isn't about this vape shop's particular business practices. Apparently this vape shop was doing some things that weren't necessarily on the up and up. And this article doesn't mention the name of the vape shop. In fact, the CDC, I think, kept that information confidential anyway. The article says, the first thing they found was ridiculous. The employees kept nicotine base, 100 milligrams per milliliter in the refrigerator that was also home to the food that they ate. That should never happen. And it really shouldn't happen when a government agency is observing your routines. Employees also rarely wore gloves, which were present and available when handling the 100 milligram per milliliter nicotine. Again, not wise. So this isn't really about that. Sure, this shop was doing some things, maybe keeping nicotine in the fridge where food is kept. Yeah, that's a, that's a no brainer. That's a, why would you even do that in the first place? But as far as the air samples go, what did they actually find? Yeah, I mean, Basically nothing. Basically the workers were there all day. They took samples all day long over the course of an entire work day from areas around the juice bar, from areas around the lounge area, and they basically found nothing. Two of the eight samples that they had did test positive for formaldehyde though. But the formaldehyde levels in those samples were about half of what the NIOSH, you know, recommended exposure in the workplace is, about half. And those formaldehyde samples showing up within these tests aren't exclusive to a vape shop. Uh, NIOSH went on to say in their report, low concentrations of formaldehyde exist in many indoor environments because of off-gassing from furnishings, clothing, and other materials. There could probably even be formaldehyde somewhere in the air in here because I have furniture. It, it, it's, a, it's a thing that is in the air. So they detected these like trace amounts of formaldehyde in the air simply because it was in an indoor environment. But what about nicotine? We hear a lot about like secondhand vaping, like, oh, you can't, you know, secondhand vapor, secondhand smoke, it's the same thing. What did they find? Did they find any nicotine in it? Nicotine measures came with an asterisk, estimated concentration. This concentration was between the minimum detectable and minimum quantifiable concentrations, they said. In other words, the amount measured was too low to provide an accurate number. We call that trace amounts, trace amounts of nicotine in the air at such low levels that they weren't even really able to quantify the measurement that they were taking. It was so minuscule, trace, and minute that it might as well not even been there. They couldn't even barely measure it. And a lot of the things that they did find in this vape shop literally had nothing to do with vaping, vapor, exhaled vapor, vapor products, anything like that. Apparently they found things like potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus, which are also found in human sweat. So if I touch the counter and then you do a test on that, yeah, you're gonna find potassium, magnesium, phosphorus. This is in human sweat. And they did also find trace. Keep in mind, barely measurable levels of diacetyl in the air as well. And keep in mind, all of these things, including the diacetyl, including the formaldehyde, and including the nicotine, were all at almost immeasurable levels. They were all well, well below like the general workplace standards, well below. And keep in mind, even though they only found very trace amounts of diacetyl like in the air, and there's also no evidence that vaping diacetyl leads to popcorn lung in any way, NIOSH still recommended to this vape shop that nobody be allowed to vape anything with diacetyl in the air while there's workers present. The official report said, although the measured concentrations were below all applicable OELs, to better protect the health of employees, we recommend that the employer implement a policy prohibiting vaping in the workplace with e-liquids that contain diacetyl. And the shop also got called out on their, you know, handling of nicotine. They said that this shop needs to implement, you know, just basic GMP, good manufacturing practices of like, yeah, let's use some nitrile gloves. Let's do this safely when we're handling nicotine and stuff like that. These are basic, basic, sort of basic safety things in the workplace. The results 
results from this test were so positive, I'm not entirely surprised that the CDC or NIOSH didn't really put them out there for, for anyone to see. They kind of just went, oh, okay, here's the report if anybody you know, kind of wants to see it or not, I guess. Anyway, that went on way too long. I'll throw a link down in the description to the Vaping360 website where you can read the full article in its entirety, but I would love to get your opinion on this. What do you think? Would you feel comfortable being in a really vapey shop or maybe like a really vapey environment like ECC knowing that there are trace amounts of diacetyl maybe possibly floating in the air along with trace amounts of formaldehyde and trace amounts of nicotine? If I'm gonna answer that question, yeah, I'm uh, absolutely, totally, 100% okay with that because I'm not smoking cigarettes. Nothing that they found in the air, including formaldehyde, including nicotine, and including diacetyl will give you lung cancer. So anyway, that went on a little bit too long. Let's go ahead and wrap up this news and advocacy section. I do have some more stuff from Canada that I wanted to talk about, but we'll just include that in next week's vlog. There's a Canadian petition going on right now. I'll put a link to it down in the description, but it's not something we're gonna talk about right now. I'm gonna save it for next week. So what we're gonna need to do right now is go in a time machine and go upstairs. It is time. It's time to taste some beer. All right, what's up guys? We're back up here on the patio. We're about to taste some delicious beer. The sun's going down and you know what that means? That means it's beer drinking time, right? Anyway, the beer I got today, I bought at uh, BevMo. I was there at the BevMo. Casey was doing a, a restock of the Casey Hart's cocktail stuff. And so of course, you know, I'm gonna go look at beer. What am I gonna do? Not look at beer? Anyway, I found this beer from the Lost Abbey called My Black Parade. And I just liked the label so much. I thought it looked so effing metal that I kind of had to buy it. And then I read the description that says bourbon barrel aged spiced ale and I thought oh we're getting into October it's getting a little bit chilly spiced ale bourbon barrel aged spiced ale that just sounds rocking to me the only downside I've noticed so far yeah you see that right there it's been a hot minute it's been a while since we've had a cork on the beer segment and if you don't know why that is a significant thing it's because I'm actually terrified of corks and it's not like I'm not like uh, playing it up for the camera like oh I'm so scared of corks. I mean it. I am genuinely frightened of corks. I don't want to open bottles of beer that have corks in them, okay? I feel like that's a pretty regularly normal thing to be scared of. I mean, of all the fears in the world, corks seems pretty reasonable to me. Anyway, I got my beer. I got my Grim Army tulip style glass. So here we go. Let's try to do this without flinching too hard. Oh, fuck you. I hate this. Be strong. It's okay for a man to show emotions. <laughs> yeah, all right, I did it. That was good. Okay, no, I can't throw that, the dog will eat it. I'm expecting this to pour dark, 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 and yeah, oh, it's pouring dark. Look at that, look at that, that is pouring dark. Now this beer was actually a little bit on the pricey side. I think I paid $16 for this bottle of beer, which, eh, that was kind of a, mm, that was like a last, like a thing. I, you know, I, I bought, a, I've purchased Lost Abbey beers in the past and they're always good. I've really never had a bad Lost Abbey beer. And every Lost Abbey beer I buy is always in that like, you know, 15 to 20, $20 range. They don't, they don't really have beers cheaper than that. So here we go. I literally know nothing about this beer. So cheers. Here's to you guys. Oh, it's a uh... Oh, it's uh, eh, 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 eh. I'm actually gonna treat this a little bit more like the juice tasting at the end. I'm gonna take a few swigs here and then we're gonna come back and talk about it a little bit more. Roasty. I kind of feel like that's the word that I would use to describe this beer. It's very roasty. You can tell it's been aged in bourbon barrels. It has that bourbon barrel aged quality to it. It also has a really roasty malty component to it as well. There is some spiciness in there, but it's not like, you know, uh, an overwhelming amount of spiciness. I've had like spiced ales in the past and there's always a lot of like, uh, you know, that cardamom type of spice flavor to it this doesn't really have that and if it does it's not really overpowering in any way I'm really enjoying this this is a little bit darker than I was expecting I was kind of I knew I, mean, I knew it was gonna be dark but I wasn't expecting like dark like oh, just crazy angry dark beer one of the two things I brought up here to try out a little vape bearing here I don't know that Turkish maze right I don't know maybe that could be a good 
beer pairing flavoring. It's got like that butterscotch caramel kind of situation going on, apart from like the cornbread situation, but it's got like, like a caramel butterscotch sort of thing. I don't know, stop talking about it, just try it, Nick. Uh, yeah, that's actually good. This is actually a good, uh, this is actually a good pairing in that they're quite opposite flavors. They're opposite but complementary. This juice, this Turkish maize would pair really very well with like a wheat beer or like a Hefeweizen type of beer. That would be amazing with this. It kind of goes okay with this, but they have like very contrasting flavors. There's a little component that goes really well with them. And it's not like the cornbread component. It's like the butter scotch caramel component that goes with this and the other vape i brought up here to try to pair this with is that uh rogue vigilante rogue it's it, it's caramel it's uh, trust me i don't know what's going on here either with the focus there's coconut in it there's cream there's something else it's just freaking a delicious flavor and i get the feeling that this is going to pair really well with this vigilante rogue and suddenly, did you see that? Did you see me go out of focus like crazy? I'm telling you, man, I have, I'm having camera issues left and right. For some reason, it's focusing on my arm. Okay, now is it focusing on my face? Good Lord. I don't know. You know, uh, if there's anybody out there, I mean, anybody at all, I'm, I'm making this a public thing, anybody at all that is really good with a Panasonic GH4 camera, I mean, really good. Not just like a, oh, I can take some pretty good pictures. I mean, I need someone who knows this camera inside and out. We need to have like a Skype call and I need to learn all about this camera because if I'm going to start making my videos, try to look a lot better than they are, I'm going to need a little knowledge beforehand. So if anybody out there is willing to offer up that knowledge, hit me up, nick at grimgreen.com. We can get on Skype and we can talk about camera stuff. And also after this pairing, I'm going to announce the giveaway winner. Uh, I know uh, later in the vlog, I say we're going to do it later in the vlog, but we're actually going to do it earlier in the vlog. We're actually going to do it right now. And if this person doesn't watch the beer segment, helicopter, and if the winner doesn't necessarily watch this beer segment, then I I'm just going to email this person back directly. You know, you don't have to, you don't have to watch it in the, <laughs> you don't have to watch it in the vlog to claim your winnings. You just have to be informed. So I'm going to announce it here. If I don't hear anything, eh, I'll email this person back. Anyway, last beer pairing. This is Vigilante Rogue with the uh, dead, dead land, dead, dead, uh, dead, 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 my black parade. D the word dead's not even in it. Oh yeah, holy crap, that is way better of a pairing, dude, way better. This Rogue, it, it, it's sweet, it's creamy, it's caramely, it really sets off the creaminess of this beer, which there's a lot of creaminess going on in here, really sets off that creaminess a lot. Oh, fuck. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. I'm literally going to stop the camera. I'm going to sit out here on my patio until the sun goes down, and I'm going to drink this beer, and I'm going to vape this vape, and I'm going to enjoy this evening. Anyway, let's uh, let's wrap up this beer pairing. Let's go back downstairs. Oh, what's next? What's next? Vape mail? You know, in instead of guessing, I actually have my whole vlog schedule like on my phone. It goes beer, then vape mail. So, welcome to vape mail. Oh yeah, Nick, you did a real good job of announcing the winner of the $2 sale. You know, my dad always used to tell me that I would lose my head if it wasn't screwed onto my body. And I'm beginning to think he was really right about that. Anyway, $2 sale winner is uh, someone by the name of Megan. And she left a comment on my last vlog that said, so here's the thing, has a female vapor ever won one of your giveaways? I really don't think so. I'm sure there are very few of us compared to your male viewers, but show us female vapors some love and hook me up as your first female giveaway winner. Here's the thing, Megan. I think that you could be right if you weren't completely wrong. No, I'm just kidding. I know for sure I've had some female uh, winners giveaways. I don't know. I always feel like this is such a fucking touchy ass subject now. Jesus. Yes, I'm pretty sure some girls have won giveaways. In fact, I remember very, and I, it's, I still follow her on Instagram. There was a girl named Becca who won my Joytech Evic 
giveaway. This was back in 2012. She was British. Or she still is British as far as I know. I don't think that can change. She's a British girl. She won the EVIC and I followed her on Instagram and I still follow her and I keep up with all the stuff that she's doing. So yes, Megan, boom. Congratulations. Shoot me an email. I know you have it. Shoot me an email over nick at grimgreen.com. We'll get your address. I'll take your $2 and I'll send you a big old box of stuff. Here's what was in the box. I just went through, grabbed a bunch of stuff. I don't know, some of that juice like I promised, a ram squonker, uh, that's it. There, there you go, that's, that's what was in the box. Anyway, there you go. And while I have everybody's attention, I'd like to say thank you. Thank you for bearing with me while I'm constantly, constantly fiddling with all of my video equipment, setups, and lighting, and microphones, and cameras, and I'm trying to do 4K, and I'm pretty sure I just jumped the gun at 4K. I have no business doing 4K, so moving forward, I'm really just gonna try to make my videos look good and hope that that's good enough. I've never really been like super concerned with like I gotta have the best looking videos until recently and I don't know why that is. I still really do wanna have some nice looking videos but I'm not gonna fiddle around with 4K. This is the last vlog where you have to deal with me fiddling around with 4K. That's why the beer segment was in black and white because it looked awful otherwise and I hope people got the clerks joke but yeah you know me I always do shit I always fiddle around I always mess with camera settings I always I'm like buying lighting I'm buying tripods I got a new microphone that I can't use yet I just get really into this but I should have maybe taken a step back and actually learned how to do 4k video before I just was like I'm gonna shoot in 4k video today it can't be that hard right so no we're gonna hold off on 4k for a little bit this is the last vlog you'll have to suffer through and and uh, I'll, I'll actually learn how to do it. But thank you. Like I said, thank you for bearing with me. Thank you for supporting me. And thank you, everybody, for your feedback. It has all been very, very helpful. I appreciate it. But now, like I said earlier, let's get back to the vlog. It's time for some uh, vape mail. Well, I got my fancy green knife. I got my vanilla scented garbage bag. That means it's time to open some freaking vape mail. I was a bunch this week. It's really piled up on me a little bit. But the first thing came to me and I know exactly what this is. It came from Vaping Heathen and he did. He made me a special edition like green, grim green logoed dead rabbit RDA. And I know what it is and I'm really excited. This is like Christmas, man. Oh, Heathen. You're such a nice guy. Uh, he left a little post-it note on here that says, Nick, it was great meeting you at ECC. Uh, this custom dead rabbit is my way of saying thank you uh, for the live review. Saliente Billy, AKA Heathen. Yeah, absolutely. Bill, I'm gonna keep this post-it note forever. I'm gonna put it on my, I'm gonna put it over here. I'm gonna put it on my, I'm gonna put it on Han Solo. Yeah, dude. Oh, that's cool. It's like this cool aqua greeny color. Yeah, that is beautiful. And it says dead rabbit and it says grim green on there. I wonder if I can, wonder if my camera will focus on it. No, maybe not. Let's try it. It says grim green on there. It's kind of engraved and cool. I don't know, I just think that's really cool. Thanks, Heathen, I appreciate it, man. Anyway, yeah, cool, I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna use that for sure, just a little bit later on, not necessarily like a, you know, a, a new product or anything for review, but Dead Rabbit, that's cool. And I do have a bunch of stuff from DHL here, and I honestly, I have no idea. I have no idea. I, I talk to Chinese vendors, Things show up, things don't show up. I've talked to Chinese vendors for weeks at a time only to have nothing show up in the mail. So it's always kind of a gamble when we're opening vape mail. This is the VT75D mod. Looks like a dual 18650 guy. It's got some like, uh, you know, 1990s Lexus fake wood grain on there. Looks to be, uh, I don't know, fully stainless steel. I've tried the other VT mods. I had the VT75 as well from H Cigar, and this is the VT75D. So I don't know, if you think this is a, a full DNA 75C? I don't think so. Even though that screen looks like it could fit it in there, I don't think this is it. Interestingly shaped. It's got this weird slope on the back, and it's, I don't know, man, that's a weird, it's a weird mod. Anyway, VT75D. Do you guys know anything about this mod? And it came with a, uh, a gift bag. I'm, I'm glad that they, uh, they went through the trouble to ship this to me. Air? 
And this is in red. Yeah, this, okay. This is the Boreas V2 RTA. Again, Boreas. I don't like saying Boreas. Boreas. I got, I got one of these. I opened one of these. Okay, I'm assuming that this is going to be like the final production version of the Boreas. This is the one that I'll probably end up doing a review for. So th thanks, Ogvake, for sending the final version. This one is heavy and it appears to be completely wrapped in just foam and tape. So, um, yep, just foam and tape. All right, this is from Segeli. Oh, this is that really lighty uppy, weird, crazy looking mod. That is, that's a crazy ass looking mod. Doesn't have any colors on it, but one is red and one is gold. And I think I'd like to open this red one. I know for sure I have a topper in here that I would definitely like to build today and vape in this vlog. And I might actually put it on this, even though, oh, I don't know if that's gonna be a very good fit. Oh, wow, what the F? Okay, uh, thoughts, it's got purple and red, and I'm assuming a lot of LEDs that light up on the front. Okay, I can't resist, I need some batteries. What is even the name of this mod? Oh, it's the Segeli MT, the Segeli MT. That's a, such a weird name for a mod, the MT? It just makes it sound empty. It's the Segeli Empty. All right, let's see those LEDs. Yeah, there's a bunch. One, two, three, four, five, six LEDs across the front. You can kind of see inside the mod a little bit. If I'm being completely honest, let's make sure that there's plastic on here. Let's make sure that there's no plastic on here. Okay, I can't, I literally can't see if there's a plastic film on here. I don't think there is. I've been picking at the edge and nothing's happening. But anyway, yeah, there you go. It's, uh, it lights up blue and then the body of it is purple, and then the accents are red. That's just a, a real weird hodgepodge of colors right there, isn't it? I don't really even find this mod super appealing. I don't like the way it looks, and I don't like, I don't like holding it. It's a very odd shape. It feels really nice like this, but then your button's on the front. I wish, I wish they would have put a button over here. God, that would have been so much better. Well, anyway, it's a thing. It's here. It's the Segeli MT, and I'm gonna maybe use it for a while. Now, this one was definitely cut open and retaped by DHL. Buybest.com? Buybest.com? Have I ever talked to buybest.com? I have no idea. Oh, this is the, uh, okay, this is from Vupu. This is from Vupu. Okay. Is this just the Vupu drag? I, are, I I have uh, I have Vupu drags. I've got Vupu drags to give away. Oh, okay. This is the resin drag. I don't, this uh, there's already like eight quadrillion reviews of this. I mean that looks really cool. That that this this the drag is a great mod, and the resin door looks very cool on there. Yeah. Okay. Got a resin Vupu drag, and I got two more to go into the $2 sale. I will be announcing the recipient of the $2 sale as well in, th in this vlog later on. All right, there you go, Vupu resin drag. Have you guys tried this? Have you guys used this? Have you seen this? What do you think about this? Do you wanna see a review from me for the Vupu resin drag. It's the drag with a, a, the resin door. I don't know, it looks cool. I actually really wanna use this right now because I think that looks really fucking cool. Oh, and there's a little sticker that shows you like what your resin plate is gonna look like. That's really smart. That, that, that is really smart. I'll tell you one thing, I like the way this drag looks way more than I like the way this Segeli looks. Segeli did that Fuchai glow and that had LEDs and I really love the way that that one looks, but this, Ugh, it kind of just looks like a nightmare, man. There's there's not much appealing about this. This Vupu drag, on the other hand, I, I really like the way this looks. I really like the way this feels. I don't know if the resin is supposed to sit flush, but mine does not sit flush. I have a feeling it's not supposed to sit flush. Anyway, yeah, Vupu drag, resin. And I got a few more packages here, and this one is the one that I'm really excited about. Oh, except for the packing peanuts. Why packing peanuts? Why? Let's see if I can get this stuff out. Yeah, this came from BMI, which was random. Uh, BMI rarely reaches out to me. I just thought that was really random that they hit me up on uh, Instagram and they said, hey, we're gonna send you this thing. And I said, oh, okay, cool. And it's in here somewhere. In fact, I don't know if I'm allowed to show this on video yet. Shit, am I jumping the gun here? Am I not allowed to show this on video yet? I'm needing to do some Google Foo real fast. But this is the K-Fun Prime. This is the new 
K-Fun from Svoy Mesto. I have every K-Fun that's been released. This is the K-Fun Prime. This is what I really wanted to build and put in this video. So uh, let me do some Googling and, and see if this is out there yet. I don't want to jump the gun like I jumped the 528 Customs gun. Okay, so I got the K-Fun Prime all built in Wick. There was a little bit of a learning curve. It's different from a lot of other K-Funs. They took a lot of aspects from like different K-Funds. There's like the K-Fun Mini V3 sort of close and open the juice thing. There's the K-Fun 5 airflow adjustment, but the airflow adjustment, I'm just, I'm a little bit disappointed in the airflow adjustment. Let's get really real honest right now. The K-Fun tanks have always been mouth to lung tanks. Up until the K-Fun 5, the K-Fun tanks have always been mouth to lung tanks. That's what they do. That's what they're really good at. When the K-Fun 5 came out, they included sort of a restrict restricted lung hit type of airflow that I really, really loved using. I was really looking forward to this K-Fun Prime and they did not include a restricted, you know, a restricted lung hit sort of vape experience. It goes from tiny to microscopic in airflow. This is with the airflow fully open. Yeah, it's still mouth to lung. There's no way, no way that this was intended for a lung hit, which also kind of bums me out because I put three milligram milk plus in here, hoping to have that like very flavorful, direct lung, restricted direct lung draw. None of the airflows accomplish that. So I'm kind of just vaping three milligram mouth to lung and it's fine. It's just really unsatisfying. Additionally, I've been having some pretty severe, it took me a while to set this up, just so you know. Thankfully, I'm a little bit familiar with the K funds and how they work and how they go together and the build deck and how you wick it and how all you do all this stuff, but I've been having some major resistance jumping issues all over the place. I first put this on the Revenant, it said four ohms four ohms. Coils were glowing evenly. I did a 24 gauge eight wrap around a 1.5 millimeter. There's no reason why it should say four ohms. Eventually it dropped back down to two ohms. Eventually it went back up to three ohms. It kind of settled at 0.6 for a while, which is fairly accurate. Every time I press the button on this Revenant, it asks me if it's a new load, which means the resistance just from sitting here is somehow changing. It jumps around from like a 0.7 to a 0.6 to a 1.2 to a 1.3 to a 0.6 to a 0.75. It's all over the place and I have no idea why. It's just a K-Fun deck. I've built hundreds of them. Everything is tight, everything is put together, uh, my juice flow is open, my airflow is open. I can't figure out what I'm doing wrong with this to make the resistance so jumpy fucking all over the place. But we're just gonna try this 1.3 ohms, which I know is not correct, at 15 watts. Mouth to lung, just mouth to lung three milligram. If you slip stream it and carb it and sort of let some air in on the other side of your mouth, you can kind of do a lung hit. Yeah, you can kind of do lung hits, but they're not great. That's not a great lung hit. And to me, that is a huge letdown. That is a step backwards. The K-Fun 5 could do both really good mouth to lung and restricted lung inhales. Not including a restricted lung hit in this, I feel is a huge step backwards. Obviously, look, I just got this set up. I have spent, I don't know, five minutes with it all together, and I'm kind of disappointed that they didn't include a restricted lung hit airflow setting. I get it that mouth to lung is making a huge comeback. We have things like pod systems and me ones and the fix and uh, the berserker tank and the Nautilus mini and mouth to lung is is coming back and I wholeheartedly embrace that because I'm a huge mouth to lung fan. What I didn't need right now was another K-Fun that's another mouth to lung. It should have done both. You should have been able to open up the airflow to get that good restricted lung hit and it's just not included on this. At least not that I can tell. If anybody has any information that they want to share, let me know down in the comments below. But yeah, it's the K-Fun Prime. It was like I said, I'm a, I'm a K-Fun builder. I've built on hundreds of them. I've built them hundreds of times. 
I was really able, easy to figure out like, okay, coil's going to go here and you do the thing with the legs and you screw it all together and you wick it and you put it in the channels and you screw this down. Had to put a little bit of juice on the O-rings because the O-rings were a little bit, you know, uh, squinchy. I, I want to say squinchy, not squanchy, but squinchy. You know, when you turn O-rings and they go, <laughs> they make that like horrible, weird, squinchy sound. I, I don't know, I can't think of any other way to explain it. It's just a squinchy sound. Again, it's asking me, old load, new load. Let's see what the new load is. 1.5 ohms. We jumped up in resistance just from sitting here. Not sure exactly what's going on with this KFUN. Obviously, I have to spend a lot more time with it. I had pretty high expectations for something called the KFUN Prime, assuming that they're going to release like, hey, this is the best, latest, greatest version of the K-Fun. This is the K-Fun Prime. It's like the supreme K-Fun. And so far, it's uh, it's disappointed me in a few ways, but I would like to spend some more time with it before I cast any shadows or judgment or opinions on anything. And also keep in mind, yeah, like I said before, I've been vaping this for literally, well, let's just call it eight minutes right now. So there's a lot more time I have to spend with this before it gets a full review. Anyway, let's move on from that. Let's Let's pop upstairs real quick. I, I got a fun little uh, sort of retro vaping plan today. All right, well, let's do some retro vaping. I just love the way fucking video looks up here. It just looks beautiful. I have so much light. I'm sorry, I'm gonna stop talking about it now. But yeah, I'm up here in my very well lit corner of my living room to do some retro vaping. And there was someone, and I wish I could remember their name, and I don't remember if it was in a comment or if it was on YouTube or if it was on Instagram or if it was on my live stream or something. I don't quite remember, but they gave me the idea for this retro vaping. Anyway. Someone had said, uh, hey, Graham, why don't you go back and try that Goblin Mini that you used to love so much? I haven't seen you vape it in a really long time, and I'd, you know, it'd be interesting to see what you think of it now. And if you were that person that told me that, please let me know down in the comments below. I have a terrible memory, but I would love to give you proper credit. So shout out to the person that suggested this. So yeah, I went and dug through. I thought it was gone. I literally thought it was gone. I was going through all of my stuff and tackle boxes and other boxes and things in my cabinet and I'm like, Gob I would have ne I would not have gotten rid of this Goblin Mini. I knew it had to be somewhere in my office. I just needed to find it. So after a lot of digging, I found it. Yeah, Goblin Mini. Look at that drip tip. That is tall AF. I used to rock it like this too. And the reason that I liked this drip tip was because the drip tip that came with the Goblin Mini wasn't great. It would fall out all the time. But what someone in the UK did, again, I can't remember the drip tip maker's name, but this was like two years ago. Gosh, I just can't remember his name. He made drip tips that went underneath. So this Goblin Mini kind of comes apart and you put the drip tip up through the bottom and then there's these little wings that kind of hold on and then so your drip tip is just never ever gonna fall out. In fact, I couldn't pull this off if I wanted to because it's actually inside the top part of the tank there. But yeah, this was just a little four post deck. I have really small 1.5 millimeter round wire coils on here. I think I used 24 gauge, uh, you know, anarchist niachrome wire around a one and a half millimeter. It's like a seven or eight wrap on there. And it came out to 0.44 as a dual coil. Same really easy wicking technique. You just do the, you do the troll doll. You do the troll doll technique. The Goblin Mini kind of invented the troll doll technique and any RDA that I can, or RTA that I can find that on moving forward, I think is a really great thing. And when I say troll doll, it's not that big of a deal. You wick your stuff, you know, you wick your coils and then you pull your wicks up and you slide the chimney over it and screw it down. And then you trim your wicks and you take sometimes like a little flathead screwdriver and you just kind of jam them into place. It's a really, really super simple, easy process and it wicks like a champion. The flavor on this, stellar. The flavor on this is stellar. It's such a small reduced chamber on the inside that the flavor is just a very good pure flavor. I've got this loaded up right now with Yellow Bird, which I believe Eric, Mr. Vinyl and Vapor handed off to me at ECC. Eric, I'm just now getting around to try it in the Goblin Mini. Yeah. The airflow had like a restricted lung hit type of situation going on. You could turn it down. There was like this weird little lever, like this little knob thing where you're like a 
adjust my airflow and you like slid this little lever over like it was your air conditioning in your car. I'm rocking it full open. I've got the dual coils in here. I've got this loaded up with yellow bird. It's a 0.44 sitting at, here, let's turn this up. Let's turn this to like 35 watts. No, 35 watts, what am I thinking? Let's just go, I don't know, let's go to 45 watts. No, let's go to, wow, I'm indecisive. Let's try, uh, let's go 40 watts. Right in the, 40 watts, perfect. I don't remember exactly like what wattages worked best for this. For some reason, I have it in my head that a little bit lower of a wattage made this tank perform a lot better. But let's give it a try. Yes, so much yes, all the yes. Wow, this Goblin Mini is still rocking ass. I really did love this tank. Look, it's a small little cool low profile guy. I wish I could even like cut this drip tip in half. That would be awesome. Honestly, it just looks dumb. It's very, very comfortable to vape on. I'm getting a lot of great flavor. I've never had this juice before and it's delicious. I can't quite tell what it tastes like. It's like lemon cake, like there's a little cereal component or something going on. It's really good. It's like lemon peel. It's not like lemon pledge. It, it tastes like a, it tastes more authentic. It, authentic? It tastes more, uh, yeah, I guess authentic. It tastes more like a real lemon, like lemon zest. Yeah, dude, this is great. This is a great tank for anyone wondering, apart from the drip tip and apart from the really, truly awful way you have to fill this tank, which is taking it off your mod, K-Fun style, unscrewing the screw in the bottom, old K-Fun style, and it's a tiny little hole and you take your tiny little juice bottle and you fill it up. I filled this up with a glass dripper bottle, which was like, I was like pulling my hair out. It was a mess. It was juice everywhere. Everywhere. Just get a rag and fill it up. I was getting juice all over the hill. But once you can get past that, you're gonna have, oh, it's a good vape. The airflow is smooth. It's a restricted lung hit. The flavor is great. And using the troll doll wicking technique, it wicks like a champion. For those wondering, yes, I still love the Goblin Mini and it still stands the test of time. This is a great vape. I've got it sitting on that Joytech Evic Primo Mini because Look, it's cool. This thing only needs 40 watts. So single 18650, cool little mod, cool little tank, cool little vape. So yeah, cool. That's all I got for retro vaping this week, guys. As always, if anybody has any suggestions on stuff they'd like retro vaped, I got a few suggestions already. I got some RDAs and RTAs like kind of lined up, but if anybody has any suggestions as far as like, I don't know, mods or mech mods or stuff like that, I ran across my original uh, tugboat mech mod from back in the day, 2000, what was that, 2014? God, three years ago was back in the day now. That's crazy. Anyway, any suggestions you guys might have that you wanna see on a retro vaping, let me know down in the comments below. I'll do my best to accommodate them, assuming that I already have these products and assuming I might've already like set up and built these products. I'm not gonna run out and like buy something brand new that I've never tried before just to, just to put it in retro vaping. Although that's not actually a really a bad idea. That's something that I might actually do in the future. Anyway, let's wrap this up. Let's go back downstairs and let's do some uh, getting to know Grim Green. All right, well, we're gonna do uh, some getting to know Grim Green right now. If anybody watching has any getting to know Grim, Chris, Grim what, what? All right, cool. Well, let's do some uh, getting to know Grim Green. And as always, if anybody watching has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they would like answered on this vlog, just send them on over, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark your subject, getting to know Grim Green, and ask me a question. Hopefully not too intrusive, but feel free to ask me a question. And today we're gonna be hearing from Doc Havoc. Doc Havoc writes in and says, what's going on? my?" fellow nerd at heart. My name is Daniel. Feel free to use my name. Was watching your most recent vlog, vaping this matchy matchy purple recoil and Manhattan clone. Bring on the hate. Ha ha ha. Dripping some delicious bro trip thinking I should show you this setup because it is quite good looking. Also, this should be your getting to know Grim Green segment, but I was curious. Uh, what's one of your fav- 
What is one of your favorite memories with your family? How does your family feel? What's one of your favorite memories with your family? And how does your family feel about vaping and the career choice you've made? Thank you for taking the time to read this. Hopefully I can get it answered at some point. Uh, from now, I'm just going to sip on some wonderful Samuel Smith Imperial Stout watching one of my favorite YouTubers. May the force be with you. Vape on and rock out till your face falls off. That's a, that's a lot going on. I have the force, I'm vaping, and I'm rocking out until my face falls off. You got a lot going on there, Doc Havoc. But yeah, absolutely. That's a pretty dope looking setup. Additionally, uh, obviously I have a lot of really great, great memories with my family. I mean, growing up, we had a very, very happy, happy home and family and childhood. And we'd have really great Christmases and we had Thanksgiving with my grandmother. And it was, a, it was a, I have zero complaints about, about growing up in my household. I had a great time with my family. I actually have two really great recent memories with my family. Uh, my parents got divorced when I was uh, quite young. I think I was 10, 10 and a half years old when they when they got divorced and separated. And so, you know, you see your parents as much as you possibly can. And I live down in San Diego. My mom lives all the way up in Lake Tahoe, Nevada. And my dad lives all the way up in Santa Rosa, California. And recently, one week right after the other, they both came down to visit me. Uh, my, my dad and Lon came down to visit me. And then the week after, my mom and Alan came down to visit me. And each time we went to Disneyland. And I got to go to Disneyland with my dad and Lon me, my dad, and Lon, and it was great. I had a, an unbelievable time. My dad is the one that really, like, introduced me to Disneyland. He grew up in Southern California. My parents both did, and they went to Disneyland a lot, so when I was old enough, they took me to Disneyland a lot, and I fell in love with Disneyland as well, and I had not been to Disneyland with my father since I was... 13 years old, I think. Just, just right around 12 or 13 years old. That's the last time I was at Disneyland with my father. It's a place that he loves. It's a place that I love. And so when they came down to visit, I said, yeah, we are we are absolutely going to Disneyland. You know, my dad's 71 years old. He has Parkinson's. He has a little bit of a hard time getting around, but he went to Disneyland like a champion. He was jumping in and out of Space Mountain, in and out of Pirates of the Caribbean. We were walking all over the place, riding rides and having a really good, very memorable uh time. It's something, you know how you know how you have certain times in your life that you really focus on that you really want to remember. Me going to Disneyland with my dad and lawn is one of those memories that I am etching into my brain. It's something I never ever want to forget because it meant so much to me. And then the very next week, my mom and Alan came down. We went to Disneyland as well and it was the same thing. I mean, I went to Disney World with my mom in like 2007, I think, and we had been to Disneyland since then as well, but it was just as special, just as amazing getting to go to Disneyland with my mom. She is a huge Disney nerd. She has, you know, the Mickey Mouse watch and she grew up in Southern California and she's a big fan of Disneyland as well. So getting to go to Disneyland with my mom and Alan and Casey Pickle and then just me and my dad and Lon, I think was, it, it was great. It really made this year very, very memorable to me, very special to me. Like I said, these are memories that I am purposefully remembering and etching them into my brain as they were happening because I was thinking I never want to forget this. I got to ride Mr. Toad's wild ride with my dad and nobody else will understand the significance of this but trust me when I say that it was a huge huge meaningful moment for me. Um, I, I love my parents absolutely. They support me in everything that I do. I'm not sure that they quite knew that I was like a, a pretty a fairly heavy smoke Moker. I kind of hid a lot of that from them, but they wholeheartedly support everything, everything that I do. My dad requests Grim Green t-shirts, Grim Green hats. He loves representing me. He loves representing my brand. He works with people um, that follow me and they know him as Grim Green's dad. And I think that's just fantastic. I have never in my life had anything but the most uh, unbelievable support uh, from both of my parents, from all of my family. My, you know, my brother, my grandparents, all my uncles. I mean, my whole family has always been very, very supportive of me. And that's just kind of a, a really wonderful feeling when you feel so supported. It honestly motivates me on a daily basis to do the best that I can do and know that even if I fail and e even if I have something 
nothing and I, and I fail and Grim Green crumbles and vaping crumbles and I have nothing left, I know that my parents would, would still support me in whatever I wanted to do. You know what I mean? It's, it's very motivational to have that kind of support. And I'm forever, forever thankful to my parents for being so supportive of me uh, constantly through thick and thin always very supportive of me. So yeah, Doc Havoc, thank you so much for writing in. That was a little, it was a, it was a fairly personal question. I mean, that wasn't super intrusive, but that was a fairly personal question. And you know, I love my family. I, I, I have no shame in admitting that. I love my mom and dad. I love my brother like crazy. And like I said, they've always supported me and they're just, they're just wonderfully fantastic people. And like I said earlier, if anybody else has any getting to know Grim Green questions that they are curious about, that maybe they want to see answered in this here vlog video, send them on over nick at grimgreen.com they will get filed and possibly answered accordingly on this show additionally i usually don't enjoy reading white text or black text on a white screen so if anybody has like a video if you have a smartphone or you wanted to shoot a quick video asking me a question sure send that on over as well nick at grimgreen.com so yeah switching gears just a little bit what we're going to do right now is get right into some viewer mails So I got an email here from a guy named JJ. JJ writes in and says, Baron Von Green. That's, nobody's ever called me that before, dude. I think you're gonna have to rely on what's on your desk to get the bottle flip to work. Uh, the angle that it appears you have going on will not yield positive results. He's, he's giving me pointers, basically, for when I try to flip a juice bottle onto my desk over there pointers, how to improve my form and whatnot. He says, go for the bank shot. Yes, I know that I use the word gonna and the phrase going to in this email. They mean the same thing, but they have different feelings for different situations. Anyway, I digress. Watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and Sucker for the Witch for days. Yeah, there you go. Absolutely. Um, thanks, JJ. Thanks for writing in. Uh, I could go for the bank shot. I don't have anything on my desk to really, like a backboard that I could really bank something off of. Uh, I have a very expensive iMac monitor over there and I'd rather not throw bottles of juice at it from halfway across the room. I'm going to do it. I'm confident that I'll be able to do a bottle flip eventually one day and throw it on my desk. And the only reason I say that is because when I was working at Starbucks and I was in the, uh, I was a roaster and we had the big roasting control room, um, there was a lot of bottle flipping going on. I mean, this is years ago before bottle flipping really caught on. This is in 2013, I think, that we were bottle flipping. And anyway, we tried it with everything. We would use use parking cones, we would use bottles, and I spent, I don't know, a month, I think, just trying to flip a highlighter. Flip a highlighter. One day, just happened. I just pulled it off, and it was like, Wow, that's the fucking greatest feeling in the world, and I'm never gonna try to replicate that. So I think when the day comes when I can actually flip a bottle of juice and bleh, and have it land upright on my desk, that day that day is gonna be a good day, and I don't need the bank shot anyway. Uh, Gregory got another email here from a guy named Greg. He writes in and says, "Hey Nick, my name is Greg. <laughs> Use this email as you please. I just had a quick beer question. Really, the only beer I found that I truly enjoy is a hazelnut brown from Rogue. Any suggestions as to a juice?" Juice that might pair good with it. Um, yeah, you know, there's here's my go-to for juice for juice beer pairings. My go-to is always tobaccos. I I like tobaccos. There's some really good tobaccos out there. Uh, we do the Grim Army tobacco and Amber Juice, and there's a lot of really good tobaccos out there. I really love. Love, it's so hard to find, but I love the Baker White tobacco. Very difficult juice to get, but try out a tobacco like. Pick a tobacco that has good reviews and try it and pair it with the beer. It sounds like there's a bakery flavor that I might kind of might also pair with that. There's a lot of bakery flavors I use sometimes to pair with beers. I like the donut pounder and the yig, obviously, from my lines, but there's a lot of other like really good bakery flavors that could possibly pair with that. In fact, it's not really a bakery flavor, but Milk Plus from Bonsai Vapors, as well as Rogue and uh, Skull and Crossbones from Vigilante are great, great beer pairing juices. In fact, Skull and Crossbones 
is one of the best beer pairing liquids that exist. For most beers, unless it's like a sour or a saison or like a farmhouse style ale, I always go tobacco or bakery. Tobacco or bakery is a really safe bet for beers. And if you're tasting like something like a lambic or a saison or a sour or something like that, I go fruity. I've done I've done fruity flavors as well. I used to, I vaped watermelon lemonade with a sour that I got from the grocery store and it was fantastic. Anyway, Greg, thank you so much for writing in. I got another one here from Kevin. Kevin writes in and says, hi Nick, I'm fairly new to vaping and I have to say I'm effing loving it. I've sent you an email with a question about wicking when you responded. It literally made my day, bro. I have been watching you and Ruby on YouTube and listening to the podcast while at work. And first off, I'd like to say thank you for all you do for the vaping community. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Great stuff. I recently purchased my first RDA, the Recoil Rebel, and I'm loving it so hard. I've also started trying to build my own coils and I've been looking for a vape mat to purchase. I heard you mention in the podcast about a culture of clouds vape mat. So I did some Googling and all I can find is an image of you and Ruby holding one. Yeah, that's, that's true. Dude, I would love to get my hands on one of those, but I can't seem to find any online. Is it available for purchase? Also, I wanted to say that I too am a fellow cream cheese lover. Yeah. There's a dish my wife makes and it is a jalapeno split in half and stuffed with fresh sausage and cream cheese, then wrapped in bacon. So good. If you haven't tried it, you should definitely do that. Sorry to make this the longest email ever. Keep up the good work with the YouTube channel podcast looking forward to moo content pretty sure i also said moo content in there and i did mean to say new content in there anyway kevin yeah uh here's the thing i'm not a i'm not a spicy kind of person i don't uh enjoy jalapenos i've never willingly consumed a jalapeno I'm just not into it. I just don't like it. I don't I don't generally like spicy things like that. But I guess if it's like, I don't know, I've had jalapeno poppers and those aren't really like super spicy. So this sounds like something I could be into because I am a supreme fan of cream cheese. As far as the Culture of Clouds vape mats go, yeah, they don't exist. They, they just don't exist. Uh, Michael Bodine from Vape Mats, he made up two of those as gifts for, for me and Ruby Roo. And we're like, oh, those are so cool. These are so great. And then when we actually actually started talking about like, do we want to release these vape mats? I feel like there's a lot of vape mats. You can get a vape mat for everything. You know what I mean? There's Grim Green vape mats, Ruby Roo vape mats, Recoil vape mats, Ruby Crew vape mats, Epiclouds vape mats, Grim Army vape mats. There's just, there's a lot of vape mats going around and I feel like throwing another vape mat out there probably... Yeah, I feel like that's too much. I feel like that's like really oversaturation. Anybody else is welcome to chime in. Let me know down in the comments below. If you would like to see a Culture of Clouds vape mat, let me know. It's, it's probably something that we could do. It's just not something that at that time we were ready to do that we really wanted to like, inter, you know, release another vape mat into the industry when there's, you know, bajillions of vape mats out there. We also might have to rethink that design a little bit. I love the way it came out, but a white vape mat. Yeah, it gets dirty. Juice makes it dirty and it's white and it picks up everything juice and uh it's gross i draw i put coils on it, it just left like coil rings of juice on there it got really very dirty there's a reason why most vape mats are of a darker color it just doesn't pick up dirt as much than like a bright white you know culture of clouds vape mat anyway kevin thank you so much for writing in uh got another got another one here from uh ambivalent chaos. He writes in and says, Hey Nick, I'm a huge mech mod user. As a matter of fact, I don't currently have any regulated devices. Well, there you go. You, you are in the minority, sir. I say this because I know for a fact you have used more mechs than I, and seemingly recently I have gotten into the Mimo Hemo mech mod scene. All of that being said, I was wondering if you have any recommendations. I know your good friend Ruby Roo uses Duvo mods and that rad purge mod. I was wondering if there are any mechs that I have forgotten that have gotten you excited. I currently own a Comp Life Spectrum mod, which if I'm being honest, is extremely disappointing for the 350 I paid for it. First misfires because I need, oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks really bad. He said it misfires, I need a new switch, more misfires, then weak hits because I need new magnets, and a 24 millimeter Kennedy roundhouse in copper, which I fucking love, and I plan on buying a brass one in 25 millimeter because you decided to make the Rebel 25 millimeters. Yes, I, okay, I personally, 
I didn't make that call. It was a uh, it was a team effort. Me and Dwayne were talking. Like, we should probably go 25 millimeters, don't you think? Yeah, 20. Yeah, I think that'd be I think that'd be good. There's a lot of 25 millimeter, you know, stuff coming. This is me having an imaginary conversation with Dwayne. There's a lot of 25 millimeter stuff coming out. So we decided together to make it 25 millimeters. Sorry if this email was confusing. I'm like 14 Loganitas into my night. Um, yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of really great mech mods out there. In fact, I just reviewed the uh, Descendant from rig mod which i feel is a really fantastic mech mod i think it's one of the best mech mods i've used in a long while there is also that vape workstat mod from indonesia the black delrin coated neurally mech mod guy i absolutely absolutely love that i'm just waiting 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 for them to release a 25 millimeter version of that and then it's just like shut up and take my money like i don't even care just i want one here's a bunch of money so yeah and then there you know there's like the duvo stuff the kennedy stuff is really good a lot, you know the thing that's happening is a lot of mech mods are, are being produced by Chinese companies in China now. So there's that V-God mech mod that's pretty cool. I'm not a humongous fan of it. There's the coil art stuff. There's the geek vape stuff. But I have a feeling that's not exactly what you're looking for. I would say Kennedy for sure, Duvo, Rig, Vapeworkstat, that's that's who that's who purge definitely purge that's those are the kind of the mech mods that i feel are like the the little upper echelon of mech mods not necessarily like high-end hemo mech mods but definitely like mimo if there was a place in between medium end and high end it would kind of be in there it's like a mahimo it's like a Mahimo. Thanks, Ambivalent Chaos, for writing in. Thank you so much. I uh, got another one here from Gary. Just a quick question. He says, Nate, hey, Nick, have you ever tried rayon wicking or are you strictly a cotton man? I am, yes, strictly a cotton man. In fact, I'm even really picky about how I like my cotton. I don't like that cotton. You know that cotton that's like really stringy and long and it's it's hard to work with and it's just, it kind of just looks like hair, like weird, like stringy hair cotton. Can't stand it. Can't fucking stand it. I need pads. I need Japanese organic cotton pads. That's literally all I ever want to use. I did give Rayon a try not too long ago. I want to say it was like, okay, well, yeah, I guess it was kind of a long time ago. Four years ago, I tried some Rayon. Didn't like it, did not in enjoy it, didn't enjoy anything about it, didn't like working with it, didn't like trying to roll it and wick it, didn't like how weird and absorbative it was, and it actually shrank in mass when it got wet, so you had to use more rayon because you knew when it got wet it was going to shrink a little bit and that, that space was going to disappear. It was just a really, really bizarre experience. I like cotton, and you know, this might be a pretty hippie thing to say, but cotton, it's like a naturally occurring thing. I know that it it's it's a thing that just grows and you can use it for purposes. You know what I mean? I like the Japanese organic cotton. I don't like stuff that's like overly bleached or overly treated or something like that. With rayon, it's it's mostly a synthetic fiber and that and warmth and I don't know. It's just a personal preference thing. I'm not saying anything bad about rayon. I don't think it's like dangerous to use or it's going to be bad for you if you use it. I know a lot of people that do really like rayon. For me, it it's it's not for me. It's not for me. And the last uh, viewer mail this week is, is a little bit of a special one. Comes to me from a guy named Nick, and there's pictures included, which I'm going to show you as well as I read this story. Nick had contacted me not too long ago about getting a Grim Army logo. He's like, hey, if you have a Grim Army logo, like a good resolution Grim Army logo, if you could send it over, that would be amazing. I'm making a thing, but I kind of want it to be a surprise. It's not going to be anything that I'm going to sell. It's just going to be a thing. And he was very, like, kind of vague and mysterious. And, you know, I trust my subscribers, and so I know he's not going to take this logo and start like printing grim green t-shirts and selling them all over you know wherever so i said yeah absolutely i sent him over a huge resolution png of the grim army logo and then a few days ago i get this email back and he says first and foremost of course you can use my name and all this in an email including names photos and any vlog social media or showing to old ladies on the bus actually let's keep my email address between you and me now that i think about it yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna give out your email address nick he says well the mysterious t-shirt I was telling you about came back from the printers and I am so pleased with it. I wanted to thank you again so much for agreeing to let me do it and for providing the logo. That was very awesome of you. It was my pleasure. Like I said, I trust my subscribers. I know that if I send someone a Grim Army logo, they're not just going to start fucking printing up t-shirts and selling them all over the place because that would be a dick move.
move, and my subscribers are not dicks. I've attached a couple of photos of the shirt being worn by its excited recipient, Tobias, as well as the image files I sent over to the printers. I don't know what use they may be to you, but I thought that I would throw them in. Yeah, absolutely. Wait do you guys see this, it's amazing. I would ask for a shout out for my son, Tobias, my wife, Vicky, and myself, Nick, but we've already had shout outs about a year or so ago. So instead, I would like to give a shout out to yourself and all of the fantastic vapor advocates across the world who do so much to promote positive attitude toward vaping. You and them all rock. Thanks for what you do. Yeah, absolutely. This is the shout out to all the vape advocates out there. Boom, bump it. He says, anyway, I hope you like the photos and approve of the use of your logos. So basically what this guy did is he made a t-shirt for his son Tobias. And I think this is great. And it says, my daddy joined the Grim Army so I wouldn't grow up breathing cigarette smoke. And on the back it says, and my mummy totally supports him. I think that's... I think that's amazing. I think that's so cool. I think that's just a really, I don't know, I think that's really cool, man. I, I, I really like this idea. I'm glad Nick did it. Your son Tobias is just freaking adorable. And yeah, it looks, it looks good on him. My daddy joined the Grim Army so I wouldn't have to grow up breathing cigarette smoke. That is a huge, powerful, strong, powerful message. I, I love this. Thank you, Nick, for doing it. Shout out to you. I, I think that's amazing. And thank you for sharing that with me. Anyway, that's going to wrap up that viewer mail segment. So what I'm going to do right now, it's time. It's time to taste some juice. All right, well, it's time to taste some freaking juice. Last week, this came in the mail. Remember Bloom, Bloom Vapor? Well, this is the Cliffside, which I believe is like a pineapple-y type of flavor. I'm gonna be tasting it here out of the uh, Freelander RDA. This has not been on video, but, and there's no real reason why I grabbed it. It was just something that was built and wicked, and yeah, I'm gonna try it out. It's the Freelander. There should be a review for this soon, within the next few weeks. It's something I've been trying out that I'm kind of, eh, a little bit on the fence on. We're gonna try this out. I'm just gonna soak these with uh, juice all over the place. Actually, let me do the knuckle test real quick. I believe this is like, I said a pineapple based flavor. Yeah, it tastes pineapple-y. It tastes pineapple candy-ish. Generally, you kind of associate pineapple with like a bakery type of flavor, but this very much kind of gives me the vibe of like a pineapple type candy. Unfortunately, this Freelander RDA is not very conducive to bling your juice. You definitely have to pop the top and paint your coils with this guy. It is producing the vapors. Oh, that actually smells very nice. Anyway, enough talk. Let's vape this. Bloom Vapor Cliffside. And this isn't Bloom, B-L-O-O-M. This is B-L-U-M-E Vapor Cliffside. Let's give it a shot. Okay, what I'm gonna do instead of saying anything right now is I'm just gonna spend a little bit more time vaping this and then I'll come back and then we'll talk about it. So this is a very, very strange flavor. I can't find a flavor profile for it anywhere on the internet. I'm gonna do my best to track down where you can purchase this juice if you're interested. I believe I saw on Instagram, they mentioned something about pineapple. They don't have any flavor profiles on Instagram, but they said something about pineapple. And what this tastes like to me is something that I don't even know exists. Do they make like a pineapple Kool-Aid type of flavor? Because that's the vibe I'm getting from this. It kind of tastes like pineapple Kool-Aid flavor packets, like a fun dip type of situation. It's like if, if Tang was made in a pineapple version, that's what this is. I get like sort of like a powdery pixie stick like a uh, 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 sensation from it. It's very bizarre. It's, it's sweet. It's sweet and candy pineapple, a little tropical feeling, sweet and candy pineapple, but it kind of tastes like if there was a pineapple Kool-Aid mix and you tore open the pineapple Kool-Aid mix and you just stuck your finger in it, 
and did one of those jobbers, that's what this tastes like. And it's hard to describe that sensation you get, but the first thing I thought was like pineapple powder. On my first toot, I was like, pineapple powder? But I don't know if pineapple powder is a thing. And if it is a thing, that's exactly what this tastes like. Pineapple powder. Yeah, pineapple powder. It's nice. It is very nice. It is not too sweet at all. It is well underneath the fence of sweetness. This is something that I could probably vape a lot of because it's not too sweet. I'm enjoying the flavor okay, but once I got it in my head that there was some sort of like powdery thing involved. It kind of tastes, it doesn't taste, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm going off the rails here. I need to reel it back in, Nick. You know, sometimes when you taste like a lemonade flavor and you go, wow, that really tastes like liquid lemonade. And then you taste other lemonade flavors and you're like, well, that kind of tastes more like powdered lemonade. This is definitely a powdered pineapple. That's the only way I know how to explain it. It's nice, it's refreshing, it's tropical, but it tastes like pineapple powder and I don't know what else to say. Pineapple powder. Can I say pineapple powder again? Pineapple powder. Yeah, I mean, it's good. I'm gonna vape this. Anyway, we are definitely getting down to the end of the vlog here. So what I'm gonna do is my favorite segment, everybody's favorite segment, favorite comments of the week. All right, well, let's just dive into favorite comments of the week. I do want to give a huge shout out to Nico from Finland. He always screen captures stuff that I miss and sends it on over to me. Anyway, first one came from Aiden. It says, uh, my friend says my girlfriend looks like a female version of you. I see no problem with that situation. Yeah, I don't either, dude. Fixer left a comment and said, not less echoey. Maybe put the mic in your mouth. <laughs> Um, also, please, nobody screen capture that. And then Matthew Turner left a very all caps comment that said, these juice companies need to fucking stop with the child appealing labels. Then you have fucking mods with LEDs. If I was a child, I would be cutting grass to get it. Even as a child, I had to work for everything. You fucking Californians put liberals on a pedestals. Democrats equal high fucking taxes. He was just kind of all over the fucking place with that. He went from LEDs, child appealing labels, to then ending it by saying, us fucking Californians put Democrats on pedestals and they're high taxes. He just he just really got off track. <laughs> got another favorite comment of the week here from Valentinus, writes in and says, I dreamt about you last night, Nick. Ruby Roo was there too. I can't remember what it was about, but yeah. Can't remember what it was about. Okay. Kevin L. left a comment and said, how was the Romance Mechanics concert? It was amazing. I got t-shirts. I got stickers. I bought the album. I got to, I, I got to see Ilea rock the fuck out on stage. Huge crowd there to see the Romance Mechanics. They're fantastic. Just, just look them up. You know what I mean? They might not be your cup of tea. I'm generally like a, a metal guy. I like metal, but I also do happen to like girls that sing. I love Paramore. I love shit like that. So yeah, the Romance Mechanics right up my alley, singy and poppy and catchy. And if you can check them out, if you have a set, I definitely highly recommend checking them out. If they do a show anywhere near you, go see the show. They did a great job. Not even going to try to pronounce your name, sir, but he left a comment and said, Nick, I love you, but please bring your goatee back. You look like a trucker. Okay? And then I had another comment from another guy named Schweizer who says, why do you have this porno beard? Well, here's the thing. I just like it. I don't care. Um, also, I did Google image search truckers and I saw nobody with this kind of mustache. And unfortunately, I also Googled porno beard, which is just never Google it. Trust me. Trust me when I say never Google image search the words porno beard. You've been warned. This isn't like me instigating you. This isn't like, hey, come on, try it. Yeah, I dare you. Just don't. Just save yourself. Just don't do it. Never Google image search porno beard. 
please. Anyway, yeah, that's what I got for favorite comments of the week. We're done. I think we're going to wrap this vlog up. Let me just take a quick look around me and make sure I didn't forget anything. No, I think we're good. I think we're actually doing pretty good. So yeah, that's what I got, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. You can always join me here on Mondays and Tuesdays for reviews and then back here on Thursdays for vlog day. I also do a podcast called the Culture of Clouds podcast. We upload that every Sunday. And then starting in October is the Vape tour, which is going to heavily affect my video schedule. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-shoot some reviews the week before the vape tour so that I can upload those during the week. And I'm also going to have a bunch of like vlog style footage from the tour, from the vape meets, from the events. It's going to be good. I'm going to try to figure it out in my head, but yeah, October, my videos are going to be messed up. Just effed, just, just messed up all over the place, but it should still also be some pretty fun, amazing content, especially on the vape tour. And if you're coming out to the vape tour, find me. I will put you on video. That is my promise. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching everybody. And as always, yeah, right there. Let's keep on vaping.